Someone's asked me how they could um, have more control over how the pieces are played, placed. So in our current example, if we click 9, everything's randomly placed, as you can see here. Um, if we want to gain more control of this, we can do that by using a for loop. So I'm going to modify this slightly so that um, instead of calling for the drop downs, because there's quite a few of those, instead of calling uh, draw objects, I'm just going to instantiate that in line. Um, you probably wouldn't want to do this in your projects, but I'm just doing it um, to make it simpler. Okay, so we've got instantiate, it's going to be a drop down. Okay, so if I run that now, it will um, it wouldn't work because it doesn't know what spawn position X and spawn position Y are. So I'm just going to hard code in spawn position Y, and we'll set that as a 3, whatever. And spawn position X, so we don't want to create a random number. I want to make it so that we're um, doing them across the screen if that makes sense. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to use this value i. Um, just to show you what I mean, I'm going to comment that out and I'm just going to print i. So every time it loops you'll be able to see the value of i. So if I type in um, drop downs is going to become three times whatever number I type in. So if I type in 9 this will go from 0 to 27 or 26 because it doesn't go up to it's less than so from 0 to 26 so if I save that now and go back and run it type in 9 submit go over to the console you can see that it's printed out from 0 down to 26 which is exactly what I would have expected so that's proving that every time this loops that I value is incrementing by this amount okay so what we're going to do is we're actually going to use that i value to place our our ob objects okay so we'll instantiate that now if i simply made that an i so the first time it goes through i will be zero the next time it'll be a one next time it'll be a two let's see what that looks like actually um before i run that that should actually be a drop down as well okay so y is hard coded at three and the x is going to be i. So x is the first time it goes through, it's going to place it at 0, then 1, then 2. So I'll type in 9 again. There they are, they're going across the screen. So they're starting at 0, and they want to be at 1, at 2, at 3, at 4, at 5, at 6, at 7, at 8, at 9, at 10, etc, etc, all the way up to 26. Okay. So that's pretty useful. We can actually use a for loop to rapidly place things in kind of a grid format. Um, if we wanted to go down the page, we could uh, either have a whole bunch of for loops under each other, like so, or we could um, put a for loop inside a for loop. Um, I'll leave you with that to play with. All right, we're just going to modify this slightly so it's a little bit easier to understand. I'm going to make a new variable, so int, actually we'll make it a float, float, x location equals i okay so that's exactly the same at this stage i'll put that under there all right so that would work exactly the same all right why am i doing this because i'm just going to build up something so we've got a bit more control and we'll go float starting starting loca starting x location equals and we're going to put that as um, number of drop downs minus number of drop downs so it'll be off to the no sorry not we're going to put that as minus spawn range minus spawn range so that's the starting location we know that we want to start at minus spawn range off to the side um, so I could just say if I want that to be the starting location, just building on this. Okay, so we want it to start at minus spawn range, and then I, the first time it goes through, I will be zero, so it'll be zero minus spawn range, which means the first one will be placed at the, on the far left. And the next one we want to do is float x step. 
how much do we want each one to step over as it um, moves across the screen? If I said 0.5, that's going to be the gap between each one. So I could quite simply, oh, we want to put an F after that. We could quite simply just, if I put that in here, and I'm just going to put it in brackets, it doesn't really matter, but it just makes it easier to read, I find. Okay, so if I ran that now, and I'll type in 9 down here, submit, and it's off to the side, so something's not quite right. So starting location equals minus spawn range. Ah, oh, because I'm minusing a minus, which makes it a plus. So we'll just make that spawn range. Type in 9 there, click submit. There it is. So that's the starting location, and that's the step. If I don't think there's enough gap beside them, between them, now that I've got that formula, I can quite simply go back to my formula and increase the step amount. So I'm just going to make that just do 1.5. So that means each one will be slightly further apart. Type in 9, press submit. So you've got more of a gap. So it gives you, just, just by slightly tweaking those values, you can change the way this grid would look.